This is Rob Carbone, and you're listening to BD4. Here's Barrett, some shake is big, hits a three. Santa lies in the crowd with Barrett. Five on the 24, Barrett previously had an air ball. The try, the land, that's a ball. Gets it back, keeps it out, Barrett. Barrett for three. R.J. Barrett from downtown, but he quick trigger three. Gets another triple. Looking for more, but to the bottom. Well, we are, what, uh, two days? Two days away from the 2020 NBA draft. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to it because I just want all this noise to end. You know, the Knicks want this guy, the Knicks want that guy, the Knicks will do this, the Knicks will trade this guy for that guy. I just want all of that to end, and um, that's probably the number one reason why I'm looking forward to it. Uh, to it. Can't talk. Um also, you know, I am a little bit excited. I would like to hope that they are going to do the right thing and, you know, find their backcourt guy, um, their their lead guard. And I'm hoping that's one of Kyra Lewis Jr., 1A on my list. And then 1B, I've got uh, Killian Hayes, who I really like as well. I'm hoping it's one of those guys. Um, you know, uh, that would be nice. <laughs> um, but, yes. It is on Wednesday night, and uh, this is the final Knicks episode. I know I said the last one was, but this is the final Knicks episode until the NBA draft. Um, now, Wednesday night, we might be doing a live stream. I don't know if I can, if I'm able to figure it out, you know, how to do Facebook Live, Instagram Live on the podcast, we will do it. Um, if I don't know how to do it and I can't figure it out, which is very likely, um, we will be putting an episode up that night, though, you know. Um, so worst case scenario or best case scenario, we'll be live streaming the draft and discussing it as it happens. Um, worst case scenario, um, I will put out an episode after the draft where I discuss it, um, where, I, where I will be recording the episode, regardless of what happens on Wednesday night, if I can live stream or not, I will be recording the episode during the draft and talking about it and watching it as I record. So that's going to happen. Uh, it's just whether it's going to be live or not. Um, so... I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. (laughs) I hope it's something that pays off and and the Knicks do the right thing. And they don't try to throw a curveball and get cute. Um, because we know the Knicks of old, you know, would do shit like that. So I'm hoping Leon Rose has some competence, um, to where he doesn't go that route. Um, now if they're going to get cute, so, uh, quote unquote, I would not mind trading back in the draft and acquiring some assets, especially being that Lewis jr. Is projected by mock drafts to be, you know, in the middle of the first round. So there's still a chance they could get him and get some assets in return. But we're going to discuss all that. We are going to reiterate a couple of things and talk about things we've discussed in previous episodes all tonight. Um, so that's going to happen tonight's episode um, for episode 179. Um, yeah, that's it. You know, it's hopefully not going to be a long episode. It is, as I'm recording, it is Monday morning, technically early, early Monday morning. Um, Um, but as this episode is released and once I publish it, it should be, uh, it'll either be Monday afternoon or maybe Tuesday, all depending on when I can get to it, if I'm busy enough or if I'm not busy. Uh, but, um, that's it, you know, uh, not much really happening just besides some noise. Um, NFL Sunday last night, (laughs) the Giants, (laughs) Giants keep finding ways to, um, to win and uh you know they played competitive football this season despite being three and seven they've played competitive for the most part and um now they are one game back in the loss column from first place one game back overall from the eagles after defeating them today they defeated them um or yesterday they defeated the eagles uh eagles lost i think five times this season and the giants have lost seven so 
that puts them one game back. They both have three wins. I don't know what's up with the tie. Feels like the Eagles tie every fucking year. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's one game back. Oh, a trail. <laughs> so <laughs> Giants are right there. Contention. The, the division winner will have, I, I think, no more than seven wins, uh, which is nuts. Um, keep losing my fucking parlays, so that's cool. I'm tired of it. <laughs> um, I had the fucking Browns and Texans to score at least 46. That game ended up being like 17 combined points, I believe. That was a joke. Um, and that was that. <laughs> um, that's it, guys. So we're going to head to our first break. And again, don't want to go too long. I'm not going to go into specifics too much tonight. Just going to kind of reiterate a couple things and summarize what we talk about, uh, what we have talked about before. So we're going to head to our first break. And when we get back, we'll get right into the swing of things. All right. All right, fellas. So really quick, I just want to remind you that if you haven't subscribed to my podcast on the many different platforms that I'm on, you can do so right now. And all you got to do to do that is go to my website. Just go to nysportstalkrc.wordpress.com forward slash connect. Once again, in order to subscribe to the podcast and listen to the podcast or watch it on the many platforms we have, go to my website at nysportstalkrc.wordpress.com forward slash connect. So, yeah, I mean, a couple of things that have been in the uh, headlines of late over these last couple of nights. Let me pull it up here. You know, just some shit like, you know, the whole Westbrook thing, um, how Tom Thibodeau is pushing to make win-now moves and uh, things like that. And if the Knicks are going to make a deal with the Celtics for Gordon Hayward in a sign-and-trade scenario, um you know, are the Knicks going to look at Denny, uh, you know, trade up for Denny? Um, maybe that's an option. And, and also, we've heard that the Knicks are, um, I don't think it's on the page here, but I saw a rumor or you know, an article the other day, um, yesterday, that the Knicks were dying, quote-unquote dying, to take Obi Toppin if he falls to number eight. Um, so those are a couple things that I really want to touch on real quickly. Um, again, quickly tonight, I don't want to go too long. Uh, in this episode, but, um, yeah, as for this whole win now thing with Tom Thibodeau, uh, Thibodeau, um, I always forget to, to, to pronounce the TH, um, you know, wanting to win now that didn't surprise me because that's who he is. That's who he's been his entire career. He's been to the playoffs in six of his eight seasons as a coach in the NBA. So he's a guy that's hungry to win. Right. And he's a guy who likes to He's going to push his veterans out there if the uh, the young kids aren't giving him, you know, their best effort. And that's, that's you know, uh, that's who he is. I don't love those things about him. Um, I mean, obviously I want to fucking win. But the thing is, there aren't really options out there that, that you know, the only options that are out there that are out there right now to get you to win will get you to win right now and, and not in the future, right? It'll get you to maybe win for a couple of years and then be back to irrelevance after that. And that's not really enticing to me, right? That that's the typical Knicks, classic Knicks shortcut move, you know, to trade for a Westbrook to, to make a deal for Hayward. Now, now this Westbrook thing, I want to touch on again. Um, we we but we've talked about it a lot in the past, so I don't want to go too much into it. But you know, um, it, it's what can you say? You know, he's thirty two years old. He's on the athletic decline soon. Um, he's had, what, seven surgeries in his career. You know, and for somebody who relies on that explosiveness to thrive, that's not ideal. Okay, so that's one thing. You're going to be paying Westbrook $137 million for the next, what, he's got three or four years left on the deal. Um, so that likely takes you out of the Giannis sweepstakes in 2021. Um He's going to cost you young talent, one of RJ or Mitch, um, maybe Randall, and then maybe a high pick, you know, the 27th. Um, you know, so so what's that all for? You're going to... What do you, What does that look like in the future, right? Once this short contract that you have to pay a whole lot of money is over with, you know, once you're done fringe contending and being barely relevant and, you know, not even half decent, for a couple of years and getting booted in the first round. Once that's over with, you know, being cute and making headlines, 
you know, for, for being relevant uh, for a couple of years. Once that's over, you're absolutely fucked, right? You're you're without one of your two cornerstones, okay? Uh, you're without draft capital, uh, and, and you're left with with worse than what you have right now currently with this Knicks squad. You know, and who's to say you get Westbrook here, you trade out, you know, you make that trade. Who's to say they win? You know, even in a weaker weaker Eastern Conference, you're going to have Westbrook, and then he's surrounded by what? Kevin Knox, Dennis Smith Jr., Frank Nilakina, and and maybe one of RJ or Robinson. That's that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. I don't think that gets you more than 37, 38 wins, and I don't even know if that's enough to win in the East. Uh, but again, if it is, if he gets to the playoffs, it's an automatic first round exit. Is that really our long term plan? It's supposed to be a long term, you know, establish a foundation, establish something we can have for the, for the coming years, type of type of situation for the Knicks. That's what Leon Rose um, is. What we're hoping to build here. That's what he's hoping to build. Something for 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 a long time, and not something that that just you know. Get you off for a couple of years, and then after that, you're done. You're back to square zero. You know, we want something that, that works long term. Um, and I think Westbrook, you know what Westbrook is? You know what this whole Westbrook to the Knicks thing is? It's your typical non Knicks fan or casual Knicks fan's idea of what the Knicks should do, right? You got a buddy, if you got a buddy who, who doesn't watch the Knicks or doesn't know much Knicks basketball because he's a fan of another team telling you what to do, you know, that that's. That's the guy who wants Westbrook, or or if you got a Knicks fan who, you know, doesn't watch anymore because they suck, and you know there are plenty of those now. That's the guy who wants Westbrook, right? The guy who watches all 82 games every single year, me, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, the guys who know this Knicks team and who who know what they've done in the past and the mistakes they've made, those are the guys who most likely, you know, the majority of us don't want this thing to happen. Um, but the guys who don't watch the Knicks and the casuals and the guys who follow narrative and follow headlines and, you know, the typical shit, those are the guys who want Westbrook on this Knicks squad. So, you know, I'm not shocked to hear this, but I ultimately don't think it will happen. Um, just something that I hope doesn't as well. It's just a mistake to me. Um, I think he'll put up his numbers. He'll be cute for a few years, but it won't it won't fucking turn the Knicks around. You know, it'll it'll. It's such a stupid stopgap type move that a fool, it, only a fool, would fall for this. Um, Gordon Hayward, uh, that's also been a thing we've we've heard about over the last couple of nights. Um, you know, a thirty-four million dollar player option in two thousand twenty-one. Um, if he opts in, you know, there's rumors to that say he might opt out. Um. Yeah, I mean, in a market like this, why the fuck is this fucking software that I use so fucking slow? Here we go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> a little abrupt rant there. Um, in a market like this, I don't think opting out is best for Hayward. <laughs> fucking, fucking why not opt in and make the 34 mil? You're not getting that if you opt out. If you test the market, you're probably not getting more than 15 mil. If your name is Hayward, um, you know, 30 years old, you know, on the on the latter half of your career, especially after that injury, you're not going to be the same. I know he did average 19, seven and four on 50 percent, but, you know, he's still not the same player he used to be athletically and, you know, not the defensive player he was once and it doesn't have the pop. But, you know, his best option would probably be to opt in and then Boston maybe again do this do this whole sign in trade thing. Um, that's probably the most likely scenario if the Knicks were to trade for him. The better scenario would to do in a sign and trade. This way you get, you know, you hope to get some draft capital from Boston in return. That's the only way this works, you know. You don't trade for Gordon Hayward for Gordon Hayward if you're the Knicks. If you're trading for Gordon Hayward and you're the Knicks, you're trading for those two draft picks in return, right? The, the 14th pick and the 30th pick. Uh, I think they also have the 47th in the second round, but... That's that's what's you know, Hayward's just to sweeten the pot. If you get some production out of him, whatever, fifteen and five, and and, and you know somebody who can play, um, play the three with RJ, two and three, that's just a a bonus. The the real thing, the meat and potatoes of this deal, if you're trading, let's say Randall, and if you're trading maybe the number eight 
to to Boston and you get the 14th back and the 30th along with your 27 and 37 that's with Hayward that's the fucking you know deal here um I would hope the Knicks don't have to include their number eight, but again, this is a scenario where it's probably not realistic to begin with. So talking about trading for Hayward, I don't think it's real. I think it would it would take a decent amount for the Knicks to get him. Um, the only way it would work again is if the Knicks got both, not just one of those first round picks from Boston. But I don't think they're doing that. I think they're going to ask for a lot. And if they are clearing cap, I don't think they want Randall in return. So then I think about it. It's just another stupid headline move that doesn't really make sense for either either side. Um, I think there are more suitor, there are better suitors out there. You know, there are more um, better fits for fucking uh, Hayward, and you know, we've heard the Pacers, uh, Indiana wants to find a, a new home for Miles Turner. Um, they're probably a better suitor. And I've heard Hayward himself wants a long term contract. So, you know, why in in the in your early thirties would you want to you know, play the later years of your career on a rebuilding Knicks squad as opposed to when you can go to a guy or a team that's fucking contending right now. Um, so I, I, I don't think he's going to be motivated to play in New York anyway. I don't think that's happening. Uh, I think the only way you do it if you're the Knicks is if you're getting two first round picks in return. But again, I don't know about that. You know, I don't know if Boston's doing that. Uh, so that's that. You know, that that's that's this whole fucking Westbrook thing. This Hayward thing, you know, Bibbs wants to win now. Um, hope that's not true to where he ends up doing one of these two things and, and trades for Westbrook or Hayward. Um, but we'll have to see, you know. Uh, the Knicks and, and Denny, you know, they might trade up for him. Um, I don't know why they would trade up for someone like him. You know, he could probably, there's a possibility that Denny, you know, uh, that that Denny um, falls to eight. You know, I don't think it's that crazy to think that um, he'll go to eight. You know, he he's a he's a player who, um, you know he he he's got size. Um, you know, he's your typical modern day forward, uh, point forward type. You know, a Luka Doncic light, where he can you know pass. You know, he's a good playmaker. Um, he's also got some defense. You know, he's a jack of all trades type of guy. Um, He'll give you a little bit of it, of everything out there. Um, not much of a shooter slash scorer yet. You know, only averaged 15 points per 36 minutes. Uh, I think he was like 28% from downtown. So that's a concern. Um, I wouldn't, so I wouldn't trade up for someone like him. I wouldn't go out of the way to draft Denny. Um, I think if you take him at eight, still not my preference. But I, I again, in a draft like this, you're going to have to deal with it. Um, but not somebody I would consider trading up for. Um also, again, the Knicks are dying, quote unquote, dying to take Obi Toppin at, at eight if he falls that far. Um, sure, you know, if he does, I would not hate it. He's an athletic four. Um, you could score at the rim and shoot the three. You could stretch the floor a little bit too, which is big um, for the Knicks. You know, uh, kind of a Bobby Portis, um, you know, if he was great, you know. Um, so that's good. You can get your shooting for, um, somebody who can, you know, maybe someday put up 15 and 10 at the, at the very worst. Um, and maybe also put Julius Randall in trade talks. If you're drafted in top and where does Randall fall? Right. That, that, that probably puts him in, uh, you know, Knicks maybe shop him. Um, but you know, I, I do still prefer point guard here. Fill the void. Fill the void at the lead guard position. Go for Hayes. Go for Lewis. Um, you know, not another power forward at the moment. Uh, but but Toppin's probably number three on my list. Um, if it happened, I would be happy with it. I would like it. Um, but I, I still really want Lewis. I still really want Hayes. One of those two guys. I think the smartest scenario for the Knicks, and we've discussed this before, is, is for them to trade back. Um, to 14 to 15 with Boston or Orlando trade back get some assets in return get some draft picks some even more and have a chance to draft Lewis still right because again mocks have him 16 some of them even have him 15 16 17 18 18 I've seen so there's a chance you could trade back get into the teens and, and, and still draft your guy and Lewis, that's what I would do. I would take that chance. I would take the shot. 
Because again, it's a crapshoot of a draft. After one to four, it's pretty much a crapshoot. You don't know where anybody's going. Um, just something to think about. All right, so we'll be right back, and when we get back, we'll get to our NYY, NYK question of the day. All right. I'm on a few different social media platforms today. If you want to follow my Instagram account, follow at Rob J. Carbone. If you want to follow my Facebook or Twitter account, follow at NY Sports Talk RC. All right, so last time out in episode 178, our NYY MYK question of the day, um, I asked you guys to uh, who uh, I asked you guys who is the franchise leader in triples for the New York Yankees. Uh, the answer to that question, who is the franchise uh, leader in triples for the Yankees? Fucking Lou Gehrig with 163. Lou Gehrig. 163 triples over his career with the Yankees. So that's the answer to last time out's question. And uh, for our NYY NYK question of the day in episode 179, uh, sponsored by Anchor, is I'm asking you guys to name the two finals MVP winners the Knicks have had in their history. So name those two guys. Name the two finals MVPs they've had <laughs> over the course of their uh, coveted history. All right, so that's it, guys. That's all we've got. Um, thank you for tuning in to BD4. Once again, BD4, where there's no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. Ugh, the Yankees and Knicks analysis. Fucking shit, can't talk tonight. Uh, BD4 sponsored by Anchor. I am your host, Rob Carbone, and this is episode 179 of the podcast tonight. You can follow us. You can follow BD4 on Apple Podcasts on you can watch the podcast on YouTube or you can listen to it um, on Spotify, Apple, SoundCloud, you know, plenty other platforms as well. Wherever you get your podcasts, just go to my website for those links and stuff. Just go to my nysportstalkrc.wordpress.com forward slash connect and that'll take you to a page that displays all of my information. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you on Wednesday night. Again, it'll either be a live, a live, Fucking talking like I'm slurring my words tonight. Like I've been drinking. I don't even drink. Fucking shit. All right. So <laughs> Wednesday night, it'll either be live or it'll be um, a discussion after the draft. But the episode is going to be while I am watching the draft. So I'm going to watch the draft and record at the same time. Uh, I just don't know if I'm going to be able to do it live yet. So <laughs> guys, thank you so much. Again, that is it. Not much going on with the Knicks. Again, as we go to... Uh, you know, as, as we head to the draft, it's just all going to be dependent on uh, what Leon Rose and Tom Thibodeau decide to do together, and that'll be that. Guys, thanks so much. Once again, one last time, one final time, I am your host, Rob Carbone. This is BD4, sponsored by Anchor. BD4, uh, where there's no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis, and that is it. Guys, thank you so much. I'll see you Wednesday. Ciao. This podcast is sponsored by Anchor.